There you go. Oh, there you go. I hit the three little dots off to the right, which is not where you normally do it, but uh, okay. You got uh, it. So let's uh, share. I'm going to share my screen. And we're going to start off with a smiling face of Mercury. I hope you can all see him. Mm -hmm. Yep. He's coming through quite well. Okay, good. <clears throat> and I've tried to make it large, so we're we're doing okay with that. Um, Mercury was supposed to be here tonight, so I was going to make sure it was all right with him to use him, but I'm going to use him anyway. <laughs> so <clears throat> what I'm going to show you is something new in Photoshop. It's been around for about nine months, maybe, uh, perhaps a year. And uh, under filter, which is the filter tab up top. You're going to click that and you're going to come down to neural filters. Now you can see it says neural filters up at the top there. The only reason it says that is because I was using neural filters earlier today and that was why I left off. So you click on neural filters and if you haven't loaded these before, it's going to take a minute. Uh, longer than what I just did because I've loaded them before. But if you haven't, it's gonna it's gonna do some things. So I'm gonna show you a few things that are worthwhile, and there are several things that are play toys for people, and I'm not sure why they're here. So Adobe put all these filters in here that were made by people uh, that had Photoshop, and they. Turn, try to turn it into uh, something they'd sell to Adobe. Some of them, like I said, are useful, some are not. This skin smoothing filter. Uh, can you see this when I hover over it? It shows the teenager with pimples. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, and you can see the two things it does. You can hover over any of these and they'll give you examples. Uh, this one, uh, is a little goes a little too far for me, but uh, and this makeup transfer, I don't see us ever using that. Uh, so <laughs> uh, it's something that's used for people that are on TikTok and people that are, you know, young people that are trying to be influencers. Uh, in the creative side, I would encourage you to play with these a little bit. But I don't see a lot of uh, strong use for them. I've tried them out a little bit. You can see where it takes a uh, summer scene or a fall scene there, and turn, and then you can do the sliders and turn it into a winter scene. Uh, style transfer is where you create a style in one image and want to transfer it to a, yet a second image, or you want to choose this. Uh, uh, cut out version like Mount Fuji there and transfer that to an image. Uh, so there's <clears throat> different uses, but like I said, uh, not stuff that that uh, photographers would use that often. It's more of a artist type of tool. I'm going <clears> to <throat> look at Harmony and all that is is you take a single image and tell a second image to harmonize with that. And so what it's done is it said, okay, I've got this picture of these golden trees and I want the colors to be reflected in the person. And it automatically will take a shot at uh, putting color in there. I've not been happy with results of that, but you can play with it. Um, this one is you take an image that has it's the upper left-hand image, and it has a lot of wild colors in it. And then you ask Photoshop to interpret it into your image, and it takes those colors and uses them as a base to change the color of the flowers in this case. I'm not going to spend a lot of time. I just wanted to show them to you. I will show you color eyes and a, a couple of other things. OK, so let's go to skin smoothing. And we're going to use mercury here. And, oh, I got to turn it on, sorry. See these little toggles, you have to turn it on. And the other thing about it is some of these will 
uh, run after you after you make it. Let's let's do a little bit of blur and I'll show you. So I'm going to do a little bit of well. Let's take that back. I'm going to come back to smoothness. So I'm going to smooth out Mercury a little bit, and I'm going to move it this way. Now, if you can see below, well, I guess not. Okay, so this one renders on your computer. Some of them render in the cloud. So it takes longer, but it will tell you if it's rendering in the cloud and give you a timeline to say it's rendering and it'll be done soon kind of thing. So <clears throat> what I've done here is I've just added a little bit of softness to uh, take a couple of years off of Mercury there. And you can, I'll, I'm going to show you dramatic difference here, uh, which I don't think I would ever want to do, but uh, let's see. Come on, Mercury. You can charge more with these, right? Yeah, that's right. Well, he's as smooth as he's going to get, I guess. Let's try blur and see what that gives us. Is it it is it processing? Yeah, it doesn't feel like it's processing, does it? Uh, that's the original. Yeah, it did. It was just too fast. Uh, so look at it, like his chin area here. And then I'm going to put this blur up to 50%. And then you can see what happens. Let me run it all the way up. Yeah, it it blurred it right in here. Well, it blurred the whole thing, but it uh, it did blur. It was just fast, too fast on my computer. Anyway, these are things that you can play with for portraits of people. Uh, obviously, if it's skin uh, smoothing, you can take a look at that on your uh, play with them on your own time. There's a lot of lot of these that you can do. Eric, yes. You have a blue square around Mercury's face. Did you draw that to say, here's the face, or did it find a face by yeah. itself? Yeah, Photoshop finds it by itself. Okay. So if you had, for instance, three faces in there, it would find one at a time, and then you would add the features to that one and then move to the next one. Got it. Uh, these things, I think, are pretty much toys, and I don't recommend any of them. <laughs> But I'll just show you one just because it's uh, a little odd. Now, this one you can see below Mercury. Can you read it? Yeah. It's processing in the cloud. So this one is uh, not ready for prime time, and that's why it's processing in the cloud. OK. So that changed his happiness factor from 0 to minus 50. And that's where it was. Facial age. Play around with them if you if you wish, but there's there's not a whole lot you're going to get out of this. All right. So I'm going to go down here and I'm going to change the image that I'm working on. I'm going to switch to a black and white shot. Oh, I have to say okay. I'm going to switch to a black and white shot. Now, what these neuro filters do, which is annoying, is that you have to open, when you open up a new image, you have to go back and start it over again. So filter, neuro filters, and it has to reload them. I have not found a way for it to, to be able to load all the images up. So, and there's your answer, by the way, Rick. You can see that there's two squares. The blue one's the active one, and and the uh, white is the non-active. Yeah, both of them slice an ear. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I I think they probably accommodate it in the program. They just don't let you see it there. But and this is, I'm the little guy, and that's my brother, by the way. All right. So I just took it as an old photograph because there's a new version here of a colorized
colorized. There's a colorized that I'll get back to, but first I'm gonna go in here and they have photo restoration. So if you have some old photos of mom and dad and things, they, they're bound to have either processing marks or dust or things that have happened over the years. And so I am going to just try this out. And so activate it. And it's preset here. So I don't know. Yeah, it's processing on device. Okay, so that's what it did. It smoothed out things. Can you see the difference? Yeah, it, it, that was good. But what about all the artifacts, the the, uh, the specks of dust? Yeah, so there's another slider called scratch reduction. That was uh, off. So I'm going to turn that on. I'll try that at 50%. I have not used this, so we'll we'll see what it gives us. It's processing on device, it says. Bingo. Did a pretty yeah. good job, but it destroyed your uh, mouth. Yeah, it, it ruined my, yeah. Oops. My, my mouth and my brother's mouth. So let's reduce it and see if we can get a little better. Hmm. Are these destructive or are they on top? You, the... It's on top of it, but you this so you until you say okay and you save it, it won't destroy it, right? So what I'm gonna do is when I'm done here, I will save as as a something like David and Eric restored or something, whatever I want to do. Right. Okay. So I don't think I'm gonna try this scratch. Well, I'll try one more attempt at the scratch reduction. But I think I'm just going to use the spot removal tool in Photoshop, and that will, yeah, because the mouths the mouths are getting messed up. It's treating the teeth like a scratch. Yeah, it is. Yep. Okay. All right. So I'm going to say this is okay. And now I'm going to see, I'm not sure if it's going to let me use the colorize filter while I, since I just use this one, or I have to go out and come back, but let's just find out. So I'm going to hit the colorize. And it's going to say auto color image. And there we go. It's a little harsh, <laughs> but you can make adjustments. So let's see. Yeah, not really too satisfied. It, it's uh, my butt is red here. Uh, that's an obvious thing. My brother's wearing a pink shirt, which he would never wear a pink shirt. So I'm sure that's uh, not accurate. <clears throat> Did an okay job with that bamboo hat that I was wearing for some reason. And what are the adjustments? Can you change palettes or? No. Uh, well, let's see. I'm sorry. Maybe there are. Yeah. Okay. You can change a little. So let's see. I'm going to pull it back to bluer to make. Uh... No, don't want to do that. We'll keep it warm. And let's see, reduce the saturation a little bit. It didn't really buy me anything. I think I would have to put this back into Photoshop to, to do it the way I would want to do it. But it does, does give you some quick options if you wanted to. Yeah, it did, did pretty well with the skin color, just everything else is. Yeah, yeah. And that's probably what it, it is uh, best uh, oriented towards as well, is skin color. Because that's how you would colorize. You're not going to colorize many landscape pictures or things like that. It's probably going to be people, so... Uh, let's try this color artifact reduction. See if that does anything to our artifacts. Nope. <laughs> and uh, I'm not going to worry about noise because it's not, the actual picture is not that noisy once it got smoothed out. So anyway, 
so it's a good starting point and I, I can take this, which I will. So I'll say, okay. And then I'm gonna now see left the filters, which doesn't make any sense to me, but uh, anyway, and no longer is any options there. And so I will do a file save as, And that was 1955, just for giggles. And I'm gonna call it David Eric um, Rev. Okay. All right. Uh, okay, so let's go to, let's go to back to Mercury. And I am going to go to the next stage here, filter. And we're going to leave neural filters because I showed you any that I think are ready for prime time. Most of them are beta or just up there for comment. So try them if you wish and see if it helps you. Uh, I'm going to go to the filter gallery. And that's going to show you lots of filters all in one window. So it takes a second to open up. Um, or, yep, it's still trying. So what it's gonna do is it's gonna open up about nine, one, two, three, 12. So 14 different uh, possibilities. And all of these offer, I'm gonna close this. So I'm gonna start with artistic. And this offers all these different things that it will do automatically with Mercury's picture. And I'm not sure what it's on right now. And I'm gonna cancel that. Let's try that again. Filter gallery. So these are more special effects kinds of things. And occasionally it's something that's useful and I'll show you any one that might be useful. So it says that it's on stamp here. So let's uh, get off of that. Let's go to water paper. And then I wanna go back up to artistic. So let's go with something that might have a bit of use is film grain. Well, this is not working correctly because it's adding to any, to the existing picture of Mercury, I think. Uh, it's adding filters on top of filters, unless I can get back to zero here. How it seemed like it picked the first one on the way in. Yeah, it just picked something randomly, uh, and I'm not sure why. Um, I wanted to show you a couple of these because a couple of them are worthwhile. Okay, let's see if I can get this one to to work. This is called cutout. And this was the effect, remember that effect of Mount Fuji uh, that we saw a little bit earlier? Cut out is, is how that's done. It makes like a block print uh, style. I have used it before for a couple of my clients, not for people. <laughs> it's not a, a people thing. And that's not what I wanted to show you is the reason I chose those, but... Uh, all right, let's try something else. Go away. Let's go to stylize. No, texture. Okay. So stained glass, for example, 
has an interesting effect. Uh, do you remember uh, Charlie Ginsburg? He does stained glass and he uses Photoshop to create some basic starting points. Uh, I'm sure he doesn't do it with people. He does it with, um, well, unless he does religious figures, he might, but you can do different effects here. And light intensity, I don't think is a, brings the light from the center. This one called Patchwork is actually not too bad. I have used it before. Uh, let's see. Once again, not for a person. So probably using a person is not the best way to do this, but. Is there a history or can you see what, it, what the original one was? Uh, the short answer to that is yes, but you have to just turn everything off. But I can't get the original to start. You know, I can't get Mercury to start without yeah. having some effect already applied to them. So I'm not sure why that is. Uh, let me get out of this. It didn't work like that before. Did you just apply an update recently? Uh, about, yeah, I did an update on the beta and Photoshop both about a week ago. So maybe it's, uh, maybe it's causing trouble. I'm going to try it one more time. Shouldn't be this hard. Occasionally when Photoshop updates, it steps on its own feet and ruins something that was working perfectly fine. And then they update it again. Yeah, it's, it's starting off with this for some reason. And I have no idea why. What if you hit cancel? Does it leave them all there and just not do stamp or is it? Well, that's glowing edges. That That's correct. But I think it's using stamp as the base. Ah. If I say cancel, it's going to close the whole thing, I think. Yeah. Okay, <clears throat> well, let's ignore that, uh, that group of filters. They do come in handy once in a while. Uh, the adaptive wide angle, I prefer to use that in camera raw, and that's where you, you uh, click on your lens type and change your, your wide angle view. You can also do create kind of a fake wide angle and that's what that's for. You can play with that if you want. Uh, most of you probably know that Camera Raw filter is the same in Lightroom as it is in Photoshop. Oh. Convert diamond to another pro. Okay. Uh, let's see. It's RGB. And it's 8 bits a channel, which is what the file is, so that's correct. Ah. Wow, I've never seen that message before either. Let's see if I can do it with something different. Uh, that's the same. Set up. You don't have to have a raw image to use uh, camera raw. It could be any image. Yeah, that one opened. 
Okay, didn't like mercury for some reason, so maybe it has something to do with those uh, that filter gallery I was trying to use. Okay, so camera raw, uh, everybody should know a little bit about how to use this. And all the basics are here. And the things that I have used in the past to make an impact are turn the image cold. Uh, that doesn't do a great job with this particular image, but you can warm and cool down images really easily. Lots of tints to do the same thing, similar things. your basic exposure contrast, all of these things. I'm not going to go through all these because I think most of you probably know enough about it. I do use texture and clarity, not on this landscape, but on a person, I certainly would use texture a little bit and clarity a little bit. Uh, Dehaze is an interesting one if you haven't used this before. Let's just see what it does to the, mostly it's going to affect the sky in this image, I think. So let's see. Yeah, so it brightens the day, darkens the day. And dehaze does come in handy for images, so I do use it often. Vibrance and saturation, I rarely use it. Uh, occasionally, and you'll see that there are club members that use the vibrance and saturation too much. And I was one of those people when I first joined, by the way. <laughs> and I was learn to leave it alone. Um, here's the optics I was talking about before, where you can, uh, it doesn't show it because I already fixed the optics of the lens optics, which I was talking about. If I had a wide angle lens, it was going to pull things in and this would pull things back out. It would change it back to the, the, lens profile that I have in the system already. Oh, if you don't use this, I would suggest this. Um, don't use the grain because it's not going to give you an effect that you like, but the vignetting is good. And you can see how you can put a lot of vignetting or a little vignetting. And I would tend to choose a little vignetting. In this case, about minus 35 is where I'm setting it. And if you've listened to Bernie when he critiques images as a judge or as just in discussions, he likes a little vignette like, like we just put on there to focus you in on the image. And He's in good company because Ansel Adams did it all the time. Uh, I was up at the Ansel Adams Gallery uh, on last Wednesday. And uh, at the Ansel Adams Gallery, uh, they had probably more than 100 images of, of Ansel Adams. And many, many of them showed vignette. And, uh, and so I think it's a valuable tool. Uh, every image is going to be different and may or may not. It's going to be dependent on your taste of what you like or don't like. The other thing I want to point out is tools. There are lots of tools over here that if you're familiar with all these sliders, then I would encourage you to spend a little bit of time and play with the tools. And you can create a single, you can create a little masking, which these days, because Photoshop is so advanced in selections, I rarely use masking anymore. And I've probably said this before, but there's not a whole, there's not that many uses for it as I used to use. So uh, this is the heat spot healing tool. And it's also in Photoshop, but this is in Camera Raw. And you can use that just to paint over something. And you can see the effect is, you guys can see that little demo it was giving of taking out the woman. Hello? Hello? Yeah, well, we can see that. <laughs> yeah, we can see that. Yeah, we can see that. Okay. All right. Uh, 
So it's a useful effect and it's been updated tremendously with the new versions of Lightroom and Photoshop. So uh, it, it's a much better tool than it used to be. But play with these over here. A lot of people don't even realize that they have them. There's lots of tools here to use. And they're similar to the effects in Photoshop. Uh, not as many as Photoshop, of course, but all right. I'm just going to say, OK, and I'm going to get out of here. And then I applied my vignette. All right, <clears throat> now a tool that I do know that, that works. We'll go back to Mercury again here. And it's not something that typically you might think of using, but it's called Liquify. And Liquify has been part of Photoshop for 15 years, probably. And uh, it has value to do touch-ups on the face. And so you can see what it's doing now. It is, I've got to move my little menu out of the way that I can't see what I'm doing. Okay, so you can see that it has face aware liquify. And this has been updated recently and it's much better than it used to be, by the way. So we can see that Mercury's got one eye open and one eye barely open. Well, amazingly enough, I can open his eye. I'll go to the right eye and I'll start opening that eye. Can you see that? Here's before. So how did you tell it right eye? Did you select it or? Well, see this, this says eye size. Can you see the properties on the right-hand side? Yes. And the left-hand side. Oh, that's left and that's right, I think. Yeah, yeah, it's pretty simple. And- uh, But it's looking at it, not, it's not his left eye, it's- No, uh, I'm moving his, I'm moving the right side because I'm looking at the eye that's on the right of the image. So, right. yeah. Um, you can also change eye height a little bit to open it up a little more. They had a beta tool for a while that automatically looked at the other eye and popped a facsimile of that on the other side, flipped it and everything. And, and uh, I thought that worked fairly well, but... Uh, they don't offer that anymore, so I don't know what the whole story is there. Um, we could change his smile if we want to. The eyes are the best thing there. I could make his smile really large. Uh, <laughs> yeah, the Joker. Yeah, I could make the Joker out of him if I wanted to. But I can reduce it a little bit. Uh, he doesn't have much of an upper lip. I can give him a little bit more of an upper lip if I wanted to. Not much. It stretches the teeth, too. Uh, lower lip, same thing. I can close it up a little bit. And then mouth width, I might want to make it a little more narrow. And mouth height Just to soften him up a little bit. I don't want to change. I don't want to make him into a new person. I just want to do a couple little uh, add-ons there. You go further down and you can change part of the, the face shape. Uh, and once again, a lot of influencers and TikTok people and Instagram people, they spend a lot of time with these uh, tools and they change themselves. And uh, that's kind of not the idea of all this. It's it's only if you wanted to change a few small things. So, but you can change the width of the face. So I made just a few little modifications there. And I think that, uh, I think that works. And the biggest thing is to get his eye more open just so that uh, that works better. 
Okay, so that's what liquefy is about. It, you can do a lot of things with liquefy as well. There is a uh, bloat tool if you wanted to make an object larger. Uh, I won't get into that because it's probably not, not all that useful. Uh, okay, so let's stick with mercury here <clears throat> for a minute. And if you know this tool over here, this is the quick selection tool. When you click on that, it gives you uh, larger topics like select subject and select and mask. And like I said, masking is not very useful anymore. So if you use select subject, it's gonna select Mercury and do a pretty darn good job of selecting him. And there's a little bit of his hair up here that if I wanted to, I could add. And that's simply by clicking on this edge of this hair and getting more of it. So he selected. And all I'm thinking about doing here is showing you blur tools. And I'm going to do select inverse. And now the background selected and not Mercury. And then I can go to the filter and to the blur. And I don't like the blur gallery because you go to blur, it gives you everything you want to use. The biggest thing you'll want to use is Gaussian blur. You kick on, click on Gaussian blur, and this is affecting only the background now. And I can, I'm going to pull it all the way to the right just to show you. I can put him on a blue sky with that much blurring. And you come down to like 15 or 16, something like that. It's blurred the background. And the lower you get, the less blurring effect you'll see. OK, I'm going to cancel out of this. And you can see I'm on my history over here to the right. And I'm just showing stuff that we've done before. And I'm going to click off. OK. So there are other blur tools. And I'm going to show you the first one is right over here in the tool category. That, uh, that triangle shows a sharpen tool, but there's also a blue blur tool there. You can grab that tool, you can make it any size you want, and you could blur the background manually if you wanted to, or you can make a selection and blur just inside the selection or just outside the selection uh, using that tool. You can also go to filter, blur, and it gives you something called a motion blur. And I'll show you what that does. So let's go back and select the quick selection tool, select subject. We've got Mercury selected here in a second. And then I'm going to go to the blur. And actually, David uh, and I were just talking about this the other day. Uh, David uh, has lots, shoots lots of cars. And there's something called motion blur. And if you look at the motion blur choices, you can go straight across. As I move this, it changes the angle of where the blur will go. And you're not going to be able to see much until I move it up. And it, now it's on Mercury right now because I didn't select inverse. So I'm going to cancel this. I'm going to select inverse. OK, now I've got the background. And I'm going to do filter, blur, motion blur. And what David Kirsch, if you saw, he, he actually got a first prize for his shots at Laguna Seca. And what he was talking about with me was that he wanted to get a perfect shot of a car. 
but the background, he wanted to be blurred, which you can do by panning with the car, but it's hard to do and it doesn't always come out perfectly. So I told him, well, we could just do this. We could select the car and then we could do motion blur on the background. So I'll show you some motion blur of those trees. And there you've got some motion blur. And it even gives a little reflection of Mercury's head there too, and his jacket. And that gives you the feeling of what it would look like if you were panning and the cheetahs were running behind Mercury. Uh, that would give you some idea how panning works. But it's a way to cheat panning. So you can't use it in uh, PJ and you can't use it in nature or travel, but you could use it in creative, you could use it in pictorial. So keep that in mind. All right, I'm gonna cancel this. There's also a blur tool, excuse me, a sharpen tool. So filter, and I'm gonna come down here to sharpen. And then it's got lots of things, sharpen, sharpen edges, sharpen more, sharpen, blah, blah, blah. If you don't have a selection, which I don't right now, the unsharpened mask, well, anytime you wanna use sharpen, this particular sharpen, I would use unsharpened mask, and I'll show you why. So that sharpened mercury up because it was turned up pretty far. And that's not too bad though. So you can turn it up all the way and he's gonna get, start to get pixelated in different places. So you don't want that. You usually wanna don't go over 150 by the way, to give you a threshold. Uh, so 132, let's use that. The radius, you want the lowest radius possible that where the effect will still work for you. You can bring the radius up, but it's gonna not be pretty. So the radius should always be low. And I would say two or under is probably where my radius is always. Threshold I ignore because I'm going to move the threshold up and all it does is soften some things and I so it's sharpen unsharp mass. What is so is what sharpening I'm, the entire picture or yeah, yes, yeah, the entire picture. So I'm going to show it to you again with a selection, but it's trying to sharpen the background too, but it's so blurry that it's it's not doing much. Got it. Okay. What what is mask though? Why is it well because it is creating a sharpened mask the, of the whole picture. If you had a selection, it would only do a sharpened mask of the selection. So mm -hmm. let me go back and show you that. So let's do, once again, we're gonna choose the quick selection tool. We're gonna select subject. It's gonna select Mercury. I'm gonna go to the filter sharpen unsharp mask and now that's way too much especially i'll blow it up so you can see it better by the way uh, but it does sharpen it makes it a lot crisper you have to decide for yourself what's too far you know that's where it was with a little uh that's where it was yeah and then i if I come up into this range, it sharpens it up quite a bit. And I tend to keep the radius at as small as possible. And that gives you the opportunity to bring a little bit more sharpness in the amount category. And so now, even though I didn't make a mask, I made a selection, it treats it as a mask and it's only doing mercury. It's not doing the background in any fashion. So I'll, I'll back off so you can see that a little better. Because if I bring the radius way up, it's affected by making these stronger colors, but it hasn't affected the background. Got it. Okay, let's look at 
render. And this is something that you have probably seen before in, I know Larry uses it in some of his creative images and you can render items on your image. Uh, let me deselect Mercury here. Um, you can render and you have to really play with this. So it's not something you're going to start off doing a great job with, by the way. Uh, why didn't it give me any options on the, uh, I'm going to control Z. And I'm going to render. Let's do difference clouds. No? That's what you did. Huh. It should give me something that I can select and adjust, but it's not uh, offering that. Oh, you know, I didn't like this image before, right? So let's try it with uh, my brother and I. Let's see if I can do it there. Something about Mercury's image it doesn't like. And that was originally a iPhone image. So maybe there's some iPhone coding in there it doesn't like. So let's see, render. Clouds. Okay. Huh. Well, it's not giving me any adjustments for this. And it should. So let's let's try this. Control Z. I'm going to create a new layer. And let me see if it that will allow me to affect it. Uh, filter. Render clouds. And then I can take and bring the opacity down. Okay. So where Larry has used this to an effect before is he has taken this particular layer and I am going to cut out part of the clouds. So let's go. I'm going to feather my selection. You'll see what I'm doing here in a second. And I'm going to just say I want to just clouds in the bottom portion of this image. So I'm on the layer with the clouds. I'm going to delete. Or not. OK. It's not happy about something. Yeah, it won't let me delete it. So it's just going to be an effect on top of here. I think that I have not used this before, so that's why I'm struggling a little bit. I think that Larry, maybe he used it on his whole image. Or maybe he created a mask and put the cloud layers in the mask. I am not sure. Well, let me just try a selection and see if that works. So I'm going to make a selection down here. And I'm going to open up a new layer. And then I'm going to try it. So filter, render, cloud. Yeah, OK. So Larry did kind of a Greek mythology theme and he's done some castles and things. And he's used this tool to create clouds. And I'm not sure if you can, I'm gonna to try to erase them and see if I can create some of the effects that he was doing. I won't spend a lot of time on this, but I'll just try to do it for a second and see. Oh yeah. So you can erase, that's probably what Larry did. He put in clouds and then he erased them into shapes that he could use that he wanted. I know your secrets, Larry. I just figured them out. Okay, uh, let's dump that layer. Let's do
I've never rendered a tree, but let's see what it wants to do. Now it gives me all the sliders and things like that uh, to render a tree. Now that's going to put it right on top of the people. So let's make a separate layer first. We'll make a layer above. And I'm going to do filter, render, tree. So all you architects out there that need to put trees in your uh, drawing of the house that you're going to try to sell these people, then you can you can do that. Let's see what light direction does. Just lightens up the tree on one side. Uh, leaves. Fewer leaves. We like more leaves. Uh, branch, all this kind of stuff. Let's see what it does for us. Let's let's just say okay. And I put a tree in there. Uh, once again, none of these things are going to be allowed in uh, certain categories, only in creative or monochrome or pic pictorial. It's not going to be allowed in everything else. So and you can size them. I can, that's, I just did control T to make it smaller. And I'm going to put a tree in that pot right there or whatever that is um, in the dining room there. So I just put a tree in there. I'm going to increase the opacity. And because then, that isn't the maker's object, I don't think you can use that in any of our categories. Oh, that's true. You're right. You're right. Uh, OK. No, you're absolutely right. Thanks for bringing that up. Uh, no, you can't. So I want to erase that stem. Uh, you'll have to do this uh, as a birthday card for your mother-in-law. And uh, there we go. OK. Uh, since I'm here, let's use, I'm going to get rid of the tree. And let's use the, um, the spot healing brush. And I'm only going to fix a few of these. But you just click on them, make them go away. It will generally figure out the side of the where the side of the face is, and it'll figure out what color the forehead is, and where the shadows are, and that sort of thing. Okay. All right. Let's go on. Uh, so what I do want to show you and see if this filter gallery will work for me with a different image. And hello, filter gallery. Did I click the wrong one? No, it's just taking it's taking some time because it's going to load all those different filters. And what I'm looking for is stylize, which is down here. Huh. Only showing the one tool in there. There are more tools in Stylize than is showing up. So perhaps they uh, update of Photoshop, got rid of it somehow. There's one called Oil Paint. And 
you may have to do some trouble to find it. You may have to Google it to get oil paint. That one is worthwhile because it can give you an effect on your image that makes it uh, more interesting. It gives you in the creative or, or pictorial. <clears throat> it makes it a, a more interesting image, almost like an oil painting. And uh, Alan Levinson has been very successful with that, competing with that uh, tool in the past. And I wish I could show it to you, but I can't. But let's try plastic wrap just for the heck of it. And I don't see it rendering. Okay. Well, it doesn't like some of the images for some reason. I might have to reload or maybe they're going to send me a little update that uh, I need to add to it. So you can ignore video. That just makes your image look like a video screen. If It could be helpful if you were trying to drop an image onto a TV or something like that. I guess that's possible. Uh, this high pass, by the way, is used when you're trying to sharpen something. And Topaz uses high pass filters. You'll have to Google that and look up high pass and, uh, in Photoshop, and it'll show you how to use it. There's several tutorials out there on that. Uh, let's see. It's really too bad that it's not letting me do what I want to do with the images. So let's go to stylize. Here's oil paint. Okay. So I'm on oil paint. And I'll blow this image up so you can see what it's doing. It's going to... See in the upper right-hand corner? See what it's done. It's kind of almost uh, Monet or, uh, and that's the example before you say okay. I'll say okay, and then you can see a bigger version. So it definitely gives you that oil painting kind of feel. And if you play with it enough, you'll get skilled at using it. And this is way too much for our group because the judges I don't think would like it at all, but uh, it works for everything else. Let's go back. Oh, I need to do control Z first. All right, let's go back and use stylize again and oil paint. And I'm gonna reduce the amount. You guys can see this little window up here in the upper right? Yes. OK. Um, OK, cleanliness. That definitely makes the effect stronger. Gale, I'm going to move that around a little bit. And brush detail. Okay. You can also change where the lighting's come from, but my lighting's coming from over here. I know that, and it's it's already figured that out, or that's where it was left last time I was using it. So uh, you can increase the lighting if you need to, but I think it gives it a little too harsh of an effect. You can see what it's doing up here. but a little bit's okay. All right, let's take a look. Well, that's a little better, but it doesn't look like a photograph anymore to me. It, 
it is a good tool if used in moderation. I'm going to try one more time. And then uh, if anybody has any questions about anything I've covered, let's talk about that. So let's do just a little bit. And let's see what that looks like. There you go. That's a little better. And that could be a creative or a pictorial color. But it gives a very kind of heavy look as well. Uh, Alan used it on a picture of Zabriskie Point, and uh, it turned out pretty well for that use. So. All right. Any questions about anything in the filter gallery? So oil paint, it it didn't mess with the flowers in front. It just did it in the textures. I uh, know it did mess with the hours in, in front. Uh, let's look at that one more time. Um, well, actually, I can go forward, edit, and redo oil paint. So these, it does affect these down here. You oh, mean? okay, yeah. Yeah, it's just. Got it, okay. Yeah, it, it affected them all. But like I said, if you just use a little bit, uh, figure out what that little bit is, it can create an interesting image. So, uh, I have got lots and lots of wildflowers when I went to Shell Creek. And uh, it was a beautiful day there, but the judges didn't like it. <laughs> so I, I maybe an honorable mention. I, I don't I don't remember if I got anything though. Um, I've entered it twice, so nobody seemed to care for it. And by the way, a situation like this, I'll give you a little secret too, is I, it was in color pictorial, not, not in nature, because you couldn't do this, but I just took some of these blue flowers and cloned them over here to give it a little bit more blue. And I might've cloned a few in here too, I don't remember now, but uh, cloning helped this image. It wasn't bad to begin with, but it helped it a little bit more, mm -hmm. especially especially in the foreground. Fill in some of the. Yeah, there this trail was a little bit. There was a little dry spot here, and kind of like this, but it was over here, and there's a few other things. But the sky was just like that. That's not a phony sky, which was amazing. <laughs> it was a great day to shoot. Yeah. Nice. Okay, next time we will not talk about 3D because Photoshop's not going to support it anymore. They're making a separate 3D tool. Uh, but we'll talk about a few of the other things. Uh, I'll talk about a couple of things here in view. And I'll talk about, uh, I might talk about plugins a little bit. I don't tend to use too many. But uh, they they automate things, and I prefer to do it from scratch. So, and then window, I'll talk about that. So we'll talk about view plugins and window, and window is is critical. Uh, you need to know what's what's back there and why. And you can pretty much ignore the help key because <laughs> it's. Pretty weak. It's kind of like if you ever gone to Microsoft for help, uh, you know, they talk all about the wrong subject that you're not interested in. So, all right. Any other questions? All right. We'll see you guys in a month if uh, my internet is working. <laughs> okay. Okay. Thank you. All right. Thanks, guys. See you soon. Bye-bye.